Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Matt Zinnel, and I'm a system specialist here with Alad Tech. Uh, today's webinar will be about 45 minutes, and I will start with a quick overview of Alad Tech, and then I will be walking you through the actual demo system. Uh, we will have a couple of quick polls uh, to learn a little bit more about your agencies. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to post them in the chat window. Uh, we definitely do want this to be interactive, um, as we will be getting those answered. And then uh, when I'm finished up here with the actual demo portion, we will have a Q&A. Uh, near the tail end of the webinar here. But just a, uh, a little bit about Alad Tech. Uh, what is Alad Tech? We are a cloud-based scheduling and workforce management uh, software platform. So uh, the system is really designed to handle any sort of unique staffing habits of EMS and other public safety agencies. Uh, we are based in River Falls, Wisconsin, about 30 minutes east of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, we're all located here in this building that you're looking at right now. And the company did start back in uh, 2002 uh, as a web-based uh, scheduling system for a local ambulance service. And then since then, uh, Aladtech has grown to host more than uh, 2,200 agencies with 135,000 users across the U.S. and Canada. Um, our EMS customers range from small rural departments uh, with 30 members up to large urban agencies with hundreds of paramedics, EMTs, and multiple different stations across the board there. Uh, as I had mentioned, we do everything in-house uh, from engineering to support to sales. Um, everybody is located here right in the same building. And when you call in, uh, one of my favorite part, parts about uh, the company is you'll always speak with a real person in Wisconsin. Uh, Alagtech can be accessed from any online uh, device. So whether it's a desktop, tablet or smartphone it updates instantly so that users always have the most current version of your schedules and all of our features uh, there are no extra costs so we provide all setup training and unlimited uh, telephone support as long as you are a customer uh, with a lad tech we can create schedules as unique as your department as long as you, you can describe the pattern we can help you replicate that as a schedule and just to start off things here with a, a quick little poll, uh, I'd like to start this one here and really just kind of understanding who we all have joining us today in the webinar. What really describes your department? Are you a volunteer, combination, uh, multiple stations that you're staffing? Uh, just to give us kind of a feel. And then as I'll walk you through in the actual demo here today, uh, there's so many different ways that we can definitely customize the schedule to meet your needs and I can kind of cater it towards what our, our audience is looking like here. So we'll give that just one more moment and then we'll take a look. All right, share those results. So it looks like a pretty good mixture actually. Uh, mostly fire and EMS with multiple stations, a couple others in there. Perfect, it looks good. All right, so uh, really the next thing is actually walking you through the actual system itself. So I'm gonna flip over to my actual demo system. As I had mentioned, this is a very generic uh, schedule that we've put together and we can customize your different schedules in so many different ways as I'll elaborate more on a little bit uh, later on in the demo. But what we're looking at right away here is our homepage. Uh, so you, We'll see this on your desktop. Uh, we will be looking at the mobile version a little bit later on, um, but primarily focusing on what it looks like as an administrator uh, within your system on the desktop. So this first page, if you wanna add any sort of custom content to here, you can add images, links, uh, change the text itself, add videos on here, lots of different ways that you can personalize this first screen that we're looking at right now. And then also on this first page is gonna be your dashboard. And the dashboard is really gonna be unique to each person based on what your access is. Uh, so any sort of uh, pending requests that are awaiting your approval would be list, uh, listed right here. So you'll see some trades, some signups, some uh, vacation requests, those different types of things. Uh, it's also gonna show you any sort of upcoming shifts. So when you are scheduled next to work, that would be listed right there. Following under that is our information expiration report. I'll be touching more on that in just a few moments. And then any sort of events, trades, or discussions are located right under that. So again, some good information that you'll see uh, the moment that you log into our system. And then the next screen we're gonna be running through 
uh, in a little bit more detail is called the member database. So the member database is where we store all the different personnel data within your system and the different profiles. This is very important because all this information does tie into just about every other area of the program in, in some shape or form. Uh, but from here, you can load as little or as much as you'd like into this area. See all these different fields. We have common ones like date hired, what your title is, uh, some of the home phone contact information, that kind of thing. And then also tracking some of those different certifications that, as I had mentioned, um, to let you know when things are coming close to expiring or have actually expired within your system. Now, keep in mind, again, this page is only accessible to your administrative staff uh, whoever, or, or whoever you would like to be able to see it, where your standard EMT, they're only going to be able to see their own profile page. And in the top right corner here, this is where all your different filters are. Just wanted to point that out quick as you can really pick and choose what you're looking at here. But to give you a little bit of a better perspective, uh, if we take Carlos here on top, let's just hover over his name and we're going to hit edit member which that's going to take us right into his profile page. So this is more what he would see. And just to scan through some of these fields uh, briefly, uh, you have your basic credentials on top there, first name, last name, login, password, date hired. Uh, this is also where you would assign people to their different access levels and work groups. Uh, we can talk about those in more detail later, but essentially those are the different profiles that we can assign to people. And that really regulates what each person's allowed to do within the system. So are you a scheduler? Are you an admin or just a member? And then with those different profiles, um, controlling that along with the work groups, uh, categorizing how they can take certain actions also within the system too. Uh, right into that is going to be the messaging information. So this is where each person would plug in their mobile phone number and their email address along with their phone provider. Uh, granted, they want to receive those types of notifications as text messages and emails are going to be uh, the primary methods for those uh, types of notifications. And each person has control over how they want to receive each of those, as they might be different per person in each scenario of, uh, you know, maybe I really prefer emails for whenever my vacation's approved, but I really need a text message whenever I know that my trade has been approved. Um, so you can pick and choose between those. Another very important alert here is going to be called the upcoming shift reminder. Uh, this tool sends out a message 24 hours before each of your shifts, just reminding you of when and where you're actually working that next day. So for anybody who is using uh, or has a lot of part-time or volunteer per diem staff, this is going to be a great tool for them. So that way they're not having to check the schedule constantly. Um, they will definitely receive those messages. And then this section here off to the right, this is really only for admins uh, that will see this. This is how we can control, you know, if, if you're a larger department and I only want to receive notifications from my team rather than get, you know, a vacation request from everybody, uh, that's how we can uh, set that up all within this portion here. So lots of different ways we can route those notifications to the proper people. And then following that is the qualification section. Uh, this is where we determine what each person's actually allowed to work within the Alatech system. As you can imagine, each, each and every system that we have almost looks completely different in this section as far as the schedules that we have and the different positions that are within the, each of them. Uh, and based on what you choose here, are you a medic? Um, are you cross-qualified? What areas can I work? This regulates what shifts can I sign up for, who can I trade with, all those different types of actions all directly relate to this qualifications. All right, and the next portion is the time off accrual system. Uh, this is definitely an optional feature. You don't have to use this by any means, um, but if you, do, if you do have a need to track people's actual banks of time, like how much vacation, how much sick they have, uh, we have a way through this tool where I can actually create these different profiles. So based on how you accrue hours, whether it's you know weekly, pay period, um, annually, there's a number of different ways we can have those rates of time actually automatically go into those banks. And then whenever time off is actually used within our system, it will deduct from those banks. So when set up properly and all that's loaded in, uh, this area does essentially just take care of itself going forward. Uh, but then, of course, as an admin, you can go in here and you can change these manually. So if I want to add, you know, a couple of hours in there just to get them up to where ex exactly they are now, we can definitely do that and then add a note there if needed also. All right, well, we'll pick a date here just so I can save that. 
And then everything else in this bottom section is your customizable area. So you can add or remove any of these fields that you see right here. These are just some samples that we have. Um, but to make those changes, what you're going to do is actually go under the members tab here. We'll save that quick. And under the members tab, if we go to the database configurator page, this is where we can customize these additional fields. And you can do this yourself. You don't have to call us. Uh, it's all going to be drag and drop functionality. So I can grab a text field or maybe like a drop down menu, a couple check boxes. You can add those in and then you can just click on these to relabel them any way that you'd like. So very flexible. It can customize that to your needs. And then a little bit of the functionality behind some of the certifications. Uh, if you use this expiration date option, that's the one that will actually pull into that report to let you uh, know when things are coming close to expiring or have actually expired. And then we also do offer the attachment field. So it can pull in that, that attachment option and that would actually allow you to upload, let's say, you know, a physical copy of that CPR certification um, and have that attached to that person's profile. So number of different ways to configure that area. And then next, or lastly, is under the database, uh, you can send out a mass message. So this would more be for um, meeting reminders or just memos that you wanna get out to everybody. This would be a quick and easy way to do that where I can uh, check this box here. That's gonna select everybody's name and then I can click on send message. From there, I can do an email and a text or an email or a text message. and send that out uh, really easily just by typing in that. You can also uh, target this out to certain groups of people. So let's say if I wanted to send something to uh, just my medics or just my EMTs, uh, using some of the different data that we have in here, we can categorize people really in an unlimited number of different ways and say, I wanna send it to just this particular group um, to target them. All right. So uh, next we're gonna jump into the actual schedule here. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to launch another uh, really quick poll here, uh, just to understand how a lot of you are currently managing your schedule. Uh, as it, it's of course quite different if you're coming from more of a manual solution um, or you know maybe spreadsheets, whiteboards, using another product, maybe you're familiar with online scheduling software, definitely very helpful to you get a good feel for what other people are using and then I can kind of walk you through what we're seeing here. We'll give that about another five seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and close that and share our results. All right, so what are we looking at here? So, okay, G good majority of you are using uh, another scheduling solution currently. So definitely appreciate uh, the interest in seeing what else is out there. Um, and a, a good majority of people also using spreadsheets, which is very, very common. So let's jump back into the schedule here and I'll show you what uh, we have to offer. I'm really just gonna start off with some of the uh, basics of the Alad Tech system or the the work schedule page rather, um, as there are a number of different views that we do offer. And based on what maybe you're coming from or what your preference is, how we're gonna design your schedule, um, some might look better than others. So I just wanted to show you a few of them. Uh, our most popular view is gonna be our monthly calendar style. This is gonna give you a whole month's worth of time with all your different information across the board. A lot of different filters that you can utilize. So if you are a larger department that's gonna run a lot of schedules, this is very important to be able to go under your edit link right here. And let's say if I wanna just look at my ALS truck. We're gonna hide all those other options, hit apply here, and that's really going to trim down uh, that particular view. And based on some of the different filters that you can set up, uh, you can also hit save as here and that will give that filter a name. Um, so that way, again, if you have 35, 40 different schedules, you set up that filter the way you like it. Right, let's create a test one here really quick. And then once you've done so, it'll show up in your list of your custom views here to toggle between those very easily. So I wanted to show you this one. A few of the other options are gonna be a couple different weekly views. Uh, so if you are used to seeing more of a seven day stretch uh, of who's working when and where, this is also a great option to utilize. So I wanted to show you that briefly. And then a few of our different daily options are also great. Um, 
daily options are really nice for seeing that hour by hour breakdown. So if you do have any sort of staggered shifts or anything, um, it's also going to give you a quick visual on what your minimum staffing is. So um, each of you will probably use a mixture in, in some shape or form, but lot, lots of different ways that you can see this information. All right. So those views are all great for seeing when everybody's working, um, managing your staffing levels, knowing who's off on a given day. Um, but I wanted to show you a little bit of what it looks like from the user end of things also. So if we go under the schedules here and go to the My Schedule page, this is where as let's say just an EMT within your system or a medic, this is uh, really the only screen in a lab tech that I need to know how to use. So as far as training goes, very quick and easy for them to pick up and understand. Um, and really it's just as easy as clicking on any of these days that I want to interact with. Uh, so if I wanna put in time off, let's just click on the 18th here. It's just as simple as clicking on submit time off. You can change your time frame if you need to. We'll choose our type and we'll choose vacation here. And as I had set up earlier, if you are utilizing the accrual system, it will show you that there's uh, 48 hours in my bank. Uh, so it cost me about 12 and I'll have 36 after approval. So I can hit submit time off that vacation is now pending administrative approval. And then we also have our different trade functions. So if I wanna click on it on a day there and hit request trade, uh, depending on what your different rules are for trades, we do have two different types that are gonna be giveaways and swaps. Giveaway being uh, really just more of a one-sided transaction where uh, I offer up my shift, somebody can pick it up and they're gonna work for me. Uh, end of story there, where a swap actually requires that you offer me a shift back. Uh, so my Tuesday for your Thursday, and that'll all happen right at the same time. Um, so they can definitely send out these requests. People can then respond to those, and then those ultimately are going to go up for administrative approval um, if you would like them to. And those are all working within the different parameters that we have set to in the backend settings. So uh, specifically with swaps, it's very common that maybe you want them to be just within the same pay period. Um, nothing outside of that. We can uh, define those rules also. So I'll show you now how we can go ahead and approve those. Uh, and the, I also wanted to point out one other quick feature here too on the My Schedule page, uh, just to make sure I don't forget this one. Uh, just a nice little function. It's called the uh, Share My Schedule. So if you wanted to actually uh, sync up your personal calendar here with an external calendar, whether that be Google or Apple or Outlook, you can uh, get your link here and that will generate a link that we can use to actually connect those two. Um, very nice if you have like a family calendar or something that you want uh, to also incorporate your work schedule with and have that update automatically. Perfect, well next we are going to jump back into the calendar view and I'm gonna show you how we actually approve some of these requests really quick. All right, so you see here on the, the 14th, uh, this is a day I have a couple people on vacation. Uh, these purple vacancies are actually what an open shift looks like in our system. So if that was something you needed covered, uh, let's go in here and let's, let's trim down our schedule a little bit. We'll go back to just the ALS. And what most departments are going to do at this point in time is they're going to send out what we call a fine coverage alert. Um, I'll talk more about availability scheduling shortly here, um, but as far as uh, if you don't have availability waiting for you know a pool of people to pick from, you can uh, click on your fine coverage alert here. And the nice part about this tool is really all you have to do is just check this box if that's the position you're trying to fill and then just hit send. It's as easy, easy as that. It takes about three seconds because what this tool is going to do, it's only going to send this message out to people who are qualified to work as a paramedic on that particular truck. Uh, it will automatically uh, exclude anybody who's already working during that time frame and it will also exclude anybody who's already on approved leave. Um, so that's how it will go out to people by default. If you did want to choose that more manually, you can under your edit recipient list here. It is uh, definitely popular to send it out to, let's say, just your part-time group. If it, you know, maybe you have a little bit of time to fill it, it's not so last minute. Uh, you could send it out to them first or everybody. And then it's also going to have a preview here of what that message actually looks like. So the email uh, will read as follows here. Uh, saying your department's looking for someone to cover. The following, anything that's highlighted in yellow will be uh, pre-populated with based on whatever you've chosen there on the left. And then if you wanted to add any sort of custom content to that message, then you can definitely type right here and that will go right into that message, the body of that message also. And that goes out text and email. 
So we'll page that out and then anybody who uh, is interested can go in and sign up for that. They can sign up right from this main screen, but I'm gonna pop back to the My Schedule here shortly. Also show you that you can do it from there. Um, but I also wanted to approve a trade here really quick just to show you what that looks like. So as a supervisor, if I click on this trade here for Raymond, this is where I can see uh, date and timestamp, when it came in, uh, the, the recipients, who it was sent to, who accepted it, all your details are right here. And the nice part as a supervisor is all you have to do is hit approve or deny and then your job is done because the system will actually make this switch on the calendar for you. So Cameron is now working for Raymond that day. You have that permanent trade record right there so you know that has happened and then it will also send them both a confirmation message so they know uh, that that was actually taken care of and that their shifts have, have been swapped. All right, so actually let's do the, the time off approval here too really quick. I was using one that was already approved. Uh, you can tell that by the fact that this one has a green A on it and that one does not. So that's the quick little indicator. This one is awaiting approval and that's just as simple as again, looking at it, you can see the date and timestamps, approve or deny that. You can see your accrual balances. You hit approve. Now Carlos has been removed from the schedule. We have a vacant position and send him also a confirmation message. All right, let's go back to the My Schedule here really quick and talk about uh, signups and availability scheduling also. Uh, so let's grab, okay, I have someone here who isn't on a rotation. Bear with me one moment. All right, we'll do this here. So. Let's go into July and say that this is someone who doesn't work a set rotation and they're uh, submitting availability for you. Um, I can go in either on my smartphone and everything I've just shown you from the member end of things too, they can do that all right on their smartphone. Um, I would imagine 98, 95% of the time, all these actions are gonna be done on their devices. Um, but for, as far as the desktop goes, I can hit edit availability here. And this is where each person can go through and check the boxes of the days that they want to work. Uh, very easy to go ahead and tap each of these days. Of I, I'm available to work all those days, let's say from seven to 1900. I'll pick my time frame there. Uh, there's a number of different ways we can create a kind of a repetition here. So that way, you know, if you're available every Friday for the foreseeable future, you don't have to go through every single Friday and click on that box. You can uh, create a pattern for that and then go ahead and add this very easily just as I did there. And the availability will then act as more or less a suggestion of, hey, if you need me on this day, you can schedule me, um, and that will all show up on the scheduler side of things. But if we go back to Carlos here, I also wanted to show you, uh, so we sent out that fine coverage alert a little bit ago, and I just got a text message saying, um, hey, there's a paramedic shift available out there. I, if you're interested, go sign up for it. So this is where Carlos can then go to his My Schedule. And then when he clicks on Open Shifts, the nice part is you'll see it'll toggle on all of those vacancies that are out there for the month. So any of the ones I'm interested in, I see there's a couple of training days out there open uh, and there's the ALS truck. So it's really just as easy as clicking on those days, clicking Sign Up, and that's now pending approval. All right, so like many things in the system, there's almost always two ways to do something. Um, I know a lot of people like to sign up right from this main screen too because they probably wanna know who they're signing up to work with. Um, so they can do it right from here also. But once you have a couple people who have volunteered, let's actually walk through the approval process. So I know we're kind of going back and forth, but this is more of the admin side of things again here. So if we hover over the ALS truck and hit edit schedule, uh, one of the very important screens uh, for anyone who's a scheduler is called the hourly editor page, as this is where you make all your different daily changes. You can see here's a couple different signups that it, I was just looking at. I can see someone also said they were available for that day. And then some of the drag and drop functions. So looking at some of this information, uh, we can pull a lot of great data right here. This will show you your calculator of uh, how many hours that person's already worked within a particular range, whether it be week, pay period, or month. That's very important for anybody who does availability scheduling, trying to balance things out as you're structuring in a whole month. Um, so we can make changes to that calculator. And then also I can factor in um, really an unlimited number of different other items that exist in your database. 
So that's all going to be located right here. So let's say if we grab um, date hired, I can add in a column right there so you can see who's the more senior out of these two people. And then based on who you want to approve, then I can click on this sign up. I can apply a unique time code to that if I need to. This is really more just for reporting purposes. But if we want to use, let's say, our overtime codes for later tracking, I can then hit approve. Now, right when you approve that sign up, that does a handful of things there actually. That will, of course, assign that person into that position with the code that I've chosen. Uh, it also does automatically decline uh, the other sign up that was there. And then both people that were involved get a message letting them know they were approved or denied. So that's really how we would do the sign up processes. Again, send out your coverage, people can volunteer and we can make those approvals. Uh, but one of the other uh, items I wanted to show you here too are the different drag and drop functions. So you can actually go in and edit someone's schedule just by grabbing the edge of it and sliding that back and forth. I can also, let's say I changed my mind, I wanna take Brenda here, we're gonna pull her off ALS and move her down to the BLS truck. So you can actually just grab her whole shift and you can just drag and drop it from there to there. Um, so as you're making those adjustments on a daily basis based on you know sick calls or trades, you can definitely go in and, and use those drag and drop functions um, as you need there too. And then of course, uh, if you wanna just add somebody manually, um, you know, let's say again, that was somebody who had submitted availability. You can just select that person's name. Let's just choose Carlos here. And then I can just hit this add button and that'll plug him right in. All right. But I think the last thing to mention as far as some of the additional schedules that we can build, um, I can build as many different schedules as you need. It is also very common to staff any sort of, um, if you have different events that you need coverage for, or maybe some standbys, different items like that, we can create these, these schedules and we basically just have them blocked out on a regular basis. So that way, uh, if you ever need them, you just open them up and I can go in and say, all right, I need uh, two EMTs in training this day, or let's just pretend this as event, whatever you'd like to use there. You can add a note and say, you know, this is gonna be CPR training, add that right in there. And then when you go back to your calendar, that's something that'll show up right under all your other regular schedules. So now I can see on the 14th, I have a couple of vacant spots there that I just opened up. And then we can now uh, get people to uh, get assigned to those. But adding the different notes, I think is gonna be the last piece, which you can either add a note to a schedule or you can actually create an event. Uh, so if you click on this event uh, section right here too, this is gonna show you any of really just the labeling or different items uh, that I wanted to put on that day. Right, so next we're gonna kind of move away from the schedule. I know I just ran you through a lot of information on there very quickly. Um, but that of course is the main uh, component of the Allad Tech system and what we handle for you is the unique scheduling needs. Uh, next, we really are going to more jump into uh, some different functions, one of them being the forms tool. So we're going to start with this here. Uh, I have a couple different sample forms that uh, I created for you, um, whether that's just like a, you know, an ambulance uh, check sheet. You can see here's probably some fields that you're familiar with just in terms of what's working, what's not working. We can also do different uh, types of inventories, um, whether it's going to be like a drug box, uh, even something as simple as like a uniform gear request, equipment maintenance request, um, really customizable forms here as you can build them yourself. Um, and it's all gonna be with that drag and drop functionality. A um, Couple things to point out just that aren't uh, really visible on the surface here is a lot of the different uh, very customizable messaging tools that we have built into this, um, where of course, if you fill out like a maintenance request, that's specifically gonna send an email or a text message to uh, the person who, who handles those. Um, but more of one of my favorite ones is like for the, like the ambulance check sheet, or I can have it set up where if everything is up to par and everything's good, when they hit submit, it just gets filed and, and we're good to go. But if so they go in and say something's particularly wrong or something's not working, just by checking the box that says it's not working, that will automatically flag a, a notification to the person who needs to know that. 
So we can definitely build that in based on each of the different fields and how that's structured. And as I had mentioned, you can go in here and you can design your own form on your own. Uh, so if we go here, it's all just drag and drop. It's just like the member database that I showed you earlier, except it has a lot more options. Uh, a couple examples for those additional options are gonna be like a signature box. If you actually want people to hand sign it, uh, you can do that. There's a whole grid section that we can add in here that you can basically add in some different columns and associate some values with those. Um, definitely something we're happy to make suggestions on though, if you have a particular form that you want built. And then all that information is then stored within our system. Um, but we do give you some great reporting functions on top of that. So if I wanted to run a report on uh, my maintenance request, I can go in here and say, this is every single submission that came in in the last, uh, you know, however, many months. You can run a big report on that. Um, all of our reports do export into a CSV format. So including including our scheduled time report, which I'll show you an example here. This, for example, is going to show you every single shift in a particular range that you've ran. So if you want to see just vacation or just uh, overtime, different ways like that, we can filter that down using our edit link here. And then Again, you can take all this data, export it into Excel, you can manipulate it any way you'd like, of course, from that point, um, or you can print it, you can save it as a PDF, lots of different ways that you can get this data out of our system. And then another very, very important report, aside from all the scheduled time and any of like the time clock data, any of that um, more schedule information, this right here, especially for anyone who's coming from more of a, like a spreadsheet or something, uh, this is our system log. The system log tracks every single action that's ever taken within our program. It's gonna give you a date and timestamp of when exactly that action was taken, who took that action, what did they do, who it affected, any additional details are all gonna be off to the right here. Lots of different ways uh, to, to filter through this. As you can imagine, this would be, a, it is a huge report. So if you've been a, a customer of ours for five years, you can look back to day one of when you started using our system and see who put in the first time off requests down to the minute. So lots of different filters to, to get through this data. Um, definitely had a lot of departments who have let us know that we've, you know, avoided grievances or any sort of uh, complaints or I had my request in first type situations. Um, this report's gonna be great to mediate a lot of that. And as far as accountability goes, there's one other uh, feature I wanted to show you here really quick. Um, that is our required messages. So definitely one of my other favorite uh, tools here. I can use it in a number of different ways, uh, but let's say it is very common to use it for something a little more formal, like if there's a new policy change or maybe some new training material. Um, so you can type in whatever you'd like right into that message there. And then we can post that to whoever we'd like. Now, this is not your standard message like some of the other ones I've shown you that goes out of the system. Uh, this is more internal. Uh, the next time Carlos actually logs in to the Alatech system, this is the message that he's going to see. And the greatest part about this tool is you can't ignore it. You can check, try to click anything that you'd want. There's no way to get past this. You have to check this box that says, I agree that I've read and understand this, and then hit continue. And then what that's going to do is give you a date and timestamp for when each person actually read your message. So you can go down that list. Let's say you sent it out to 50 different people and maybe you have a couple volunteers that just haven't logged in in a long time. Um, then you could easily find those people and know that they didn't get your message. But as I had kind of used as the example there, um, it is very common to use that in conjunction with our storage area. So giving them access to uh, the documents is also going to be a, a big component there too, just to make sure they uh, they have all that. Uh, just continuing down the navigation here, we do have a discussions area uh, where you can basically create a topic and people can make comments on it. So again, maybe more of a volunteer department, you might not run into your colleagues very often as much as more of a full-time department might. So it's good to get people's feedback, kind of have that 
community here where everybody knows they can look at this discussions board for any sort of uh, relevant information that's going on and then they can make comments on it and then we also lastly on our nav here we have the help area uh, we have an outstanding video library that we keep up to date uh, basically every section of our system has a help video to walk you through some of the different areas and uh, give you some more instructionals there so feel free to look through those uh, we also do have a couple different mobile videos this is going to walk you through how to set it up on your smartphone which I will be walking you through that section here in just a few moments and then I also wanted to talk briefly about our support team I, I talked about them a little bit earlier on during the actual uh, intro portion of the webinar, um, but I can't stress enough how important it is and how great this team is. Uh, again, they're all here on site. Uh, they are primarily staffed eight to six, Monday through Friday Central. Um, you can either give them a call or send them an email, but they're all experts in the system. When you give that number a call, my the best part is that you don't have to go through any sort of phone tree. You don't have to wait on hold or press one to talk to this department. You very literally will have someone who answers the phone when you call that number and is an expert in the system and ready to help you. So uh, that is unlimited support that you get with a subscription of Aladtech and we're happy to help um, as many different times as you need throughout the whole implementation process and the training portion of it also. All right, so there are a lot of other backend functions and settings that uh, we can save for a later date or a secondary phone call here for anyone who's interested, uh, depending on what your exact needs are. But uh, I did want to take a quick moment here. We are going to take a look at what our mobile site actual looks like. So from here, this is where you can see uh, what it would look like on your phone. And so when you pull this up, very simply, the first thing you're going to view is any sort of upcoming shifts. So really the logic here is that anything that's very relevant and coming up in the near future is going to be showing you right away so upcoming shifts any available trades open shifts upcoming time off and upcoming events um, you, this admin section is available um, the mobile site is really more designed for the, the user end of things but as an admin you can you definitely can still make some approvals and things like that from your phone too um, and then it's just as simple as if I want to click on this day, maybe I can't work it, I can click on request trade. It's going to have all the same functions uh, that I walked you through on the My Schedule page. Now, there's a couple other screens here, though, to, to touch on. One of them is the daily summary. This is a quick little scan if you want to see who you're working with today. So you can scroll through this here page through a couple different days if you'd like. Your name will actually be highlighted in yellow here. Uh, my favorite page is going to be the my schedule this is where you have all the different functions that you need basically looks like a little calendar here but any of the days that you want to interact with if you just tap right onto it it'll tell you what's going on that day so if we tap on the 25th here again if I want to interact with that just tap right on it again there hit time off trade all those different functions and then as far as like the open shifts go I can uh, toggle on my open shifts so show me all my vacancies that are out there so I can go ahead and volunteer for any of these also. And then of course we have all the different forms. So if you're walking around the rig with your smartphone or you're using a tablet, anything like that, you can uh, pull this up right here. And we also do have the member database, um, which really is mostly beneficial just for the fact that you could have everybody's contact information in here um, so you don't necessarily have to have all of their phone numbers in your personal address book you can go through our website and uh, of course get that data at any point in time too all right so that's really going to be the bulk of what i wanted to cover for the demo um, at this point i just wanted to point one thing out here is that we do have a few handouts um, in the go to webinar control panel um, we will also have a link here in the chat so if you do want to sign up for a free trial feel free to click on that link that'll get you right to our website but i did want to reserve the last uh you know five five or so minutes here uh, maybe up to 10 if we get a lot of them uh, for any other additional questions um, I know I have my, my my tech support specialist that she's been over there answering them as they're had been coming in but if you have been holding on to any of your questions feel free to uh, post those in now and I'm happy to 
uh, discuss them and actually potentially walk through it on the actual screen. All right. Give me one moment here. All right, so first question that I have is, okay, so it looks like someone is looking to regulate, yeah, basically regulate how much their part-time staff can actually sign up for different open shifts and what's out there. Um, so that was one of the, the settings that I wanted to talk through um, or that I would talk through if we had kind of a secondary call and I learned more about what you need. Uh, some of those are going to be called work limits. We can set up different rules for you based on uh, whether it's full-time, part-time, per diem, the different groups can have different settings, uh, but those are all going to be listed right here. So you can set up a restriction that does not allow certain people to go over a certain number of hours in a row, uh, a certain number of hours in a range of time. So maybe that's week or month, or I've even seen part-timers that, you know, you have to stay under a certain number for the year. We can add that in and then any sort of minimum time off in between shifts for a required rest period also. We would set that up right here for you. And that can be set up to either show you a warning, which most people uh, would set up. As, as we all know, emergencies happen and sometimes you don't have a choice, but um, you, could, you could set it to do not, do not allow, and that would actually put a hard stop on that to not allow the system to go in. All right, good question uh, from Dan there. Uh, next question here, does it allow to track seniority by hours for part-time staff? Uh, from Daniela here. Uh, so we can definitely track seniority and we can sort people based on hours. I, I guess I'm not 100% if I uh, understand the question, but I think the place I would point you in the direction is uh, this hourly editor. So we were looking at this a little bit earlier where this calculator will give you the total number of hours and you can compare that against seniority at the same time. Um, so that way you can kind of use a mixture of those. Uh, got another question here uh, from Dion, I think it is. Uh, the, what are the options for exporting hours into a, like a payroll provider? So the vast majority of our customers use our CSV export. As far as taking a lot of your scheduled time report data, you can click this button right here. That'll download all that information into a CSV file, which is the most commonly accepted file by any sort of providers. That's going to be what I'll call our free option. Um, it's included, of course, built right into to every single system. Uh, there are some other options uh, as far as integrations go. Uh, this is definitely something that is a, a very popular topic right now with different API integrations or kind of connecting two systems and building that bridge. Um, so definitely happy to learn more about what exactly you need and who you need that to connect to. And we can uh, give you some more information and details on those. Uh, question from John here. Uh, can we track uh, different types of promotions or step increases? Uh, definitely. I, I'd say that definitely the most um, common place I've seen that monitored is going to be in the actual member profiles. So we can create kind of a timeline here where I could go into create like a like a new section and this is where I could add you know promotion date, step increase and I can create these custom fields. And then those are all different fields that you can have either just managed by an admin, so that way the user can't really touch them, or um, you could even have them manage it on their own also. All right, a couple more questions coming in here. I'll try to get to all of them. Okay, it looks like uh, I had another question here about uh, different rostering. Um, I think I'd have to learn a little bit more about what exactly you need the system to do. If that's something where you're creating those rosters on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. And then also I, I've heard that term used a lot with different reporting systems. So if you're looking for an integration um, with another type of uh, you know, EPCR system. Um, we do have a few of those uh, also actually live and built right now. Um, so 
that's that's kind of a tough question to answer. So I would say, um, if you're looking for more information, definitely reach out to us, and I can get you in contact with one of our account reps, and they they'd have all the answers that you need. All right, so I had time for probably one more question here. Okay. Oh, looks like someone was curious about the time clock. Does that come at an additional cost? Um, I can run you through the time clock really briefly. Um, as far as cost goes, that's another thing an account representative would have to, have to actually give you a quote for that. Um, but as far as the time clock goes, it, we do have a web-based kiosk. So if you did want to um, set it up on a particular machine, we can download a certificate on that computer um, that'll allow people to clock in and clock out from that. That does integrate, right, of course, right into our schedule, which then, of course, you can run a lot of reports on that information too. So you can say, show me everybody who clocked in and out in this particular range of time. Uh, let's grab a quick report here if I can, to say this is when they were scheduled as opposed to when they did actually clock in or clock out. Um, and you can have notes tied to that along with grace periods. Um, again, definitely one of those questions too, if, if you are looking for a little bit more information, um, definitely feel free to give us a call um, or send us an email and we can get you the specific answers that you're looking for. But that's about all the time that I have here for today. I just want to thank everybody who did join. Uh, really appreciate uh, your interest. Um, and I, I hope that I've given you a lot of great content in terms of how a lab tech can potentially help streamline some of your scheduling chores, improve different internal communications, track certifications over time, all those different types of scheduled tasks. But uh, one of our account reps and system specialists would be pleased to prepare you more of an in-depth demonstration that's unique to your agency. You don't necessarily have to see the, the, generic, the generic version. Um, for more details, of course, uh, customer reviews and videos, you can visit us at www.aladtech.com or give us a call at 888-749-5550. Thanks again for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day.